Welcome to your lesson on 8.3, Simplifying Exponents by Dividing. We're going to split this lesson into two parts, so when you look at your note sheet, it's pretty much the front of the note sheet is part one and the back is part two. We're going to start off with the quotient of powers property. Now, quotient means division. So you're going to have one base on top and that same base on the bottom. So notice that we're dividing with the same base. And if you think about the multiplication power, when we multiplied with the same base, we added. And now when we're dividing, which is the inverse operation of multiplying, we're going to subtract, which is the inverse of addition. So this ends up being m to the n minus n. So the key phrase here is just to subtract the exponent. And these examples should go pretty quickly here. Um, we can show you on the first one why this property works. So we'll first just show the property. So 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 4th would be 2 to the 6 minus 4. And that would be 2 to the 2nd. And notice we're leaving our answers in exponent form for these. Um, but if you were just to expand this out, if you were just to make this a fraction, you would have 6 2's in the numerator. And you'd have 4 2's in the denominator. And if you remember you're canceling, you can just cross off anything from the top. So the bottom 4 2's are going to cancel four from the top, and you're left with two, so that would be two to the second, which matches up with our answer. So that's why this works. Obviously, it's a shortcut because you don't, again, want to be writing out all those terms. So here we're going to do 10 to the 9 minus 2, which will give us 10 to the 7th. In the next one, our bases are the same, so we're going to go ahead and subtract those exponents. So 3 to the 12 minus 9, which is 3 to the 3rd. Number four might be a little tricky. It's just that one that you have to envision there. So I would actually just add the one there on the bottom. So it becomes 7 to the 5 minus 1, which would be 7 to the 4th. Um, number five, the only difference here is that we've got a variable as our base, but you still apply the property the same way. x would be our base, and we would do 13 minus 5 to give us x to the 8th. And then number six, we kind of have a variable for the base and a variable for the exponent, but you have that little one down there, so it ends up being x to the m minus 1. And you do have to leave it like that because m and 1 are not like terms. So it will just be two separate things as our power. So we're going to move ahead here and we're going to look at simplifying quotients of monomials. So the first step is you're going to deal with the coefficients. So we're going to divide out the coefficients. And in parentheses, after you write divide coefficients, I want you to put reduce. Because sometimes you can't just divide straight up, you actually have to reduce it like a fraction. And then the second part is you're going to simplify the um, variables by subtracting the exponents. So step two, you can write subtract exponents on variables. Now, if you think back to when we were multiplying, what we did is we totally regrouped the problem. So we separated out the coefficients and all of the like variables. We are going to do the same thing for these problems. So we're basically going to split this problem up. We're going to write negative 8 over 2. And then we're going to do x to the 3rd over x to the 2nd. And then y to the 7th over y to the 1st. Now you have to be a little bit careful with that z. We don't have any z's on top, but to hold the spot of the numerator, we have to put a 1 in there. And then that z has to stay on the bottom. So now we're just going to kind of move through this problem and simplify. Negative 8 over 2 gives us a negative 4. We have uh, like bases here, so we're going to subtract the exponents, and 3 minus 2 is just 1, so I have x to the 1st. Same thing with the y's. When you subtract those, you get y to the 6th. Then we're multiplying this by 1 over z. And when you do that, when you multiply straight across, that z is just going to stay on the bottom. So that ends up being our final answer. In number two, we're going to split it up the same way. So I'm going to group the coefficients. I've got 5 over 25. I'm going to group the like variables. So it's h to the third over h to the second. And then k to the seventh over k to the fourth. Now you have to be careful here. A lot of people for the coefficients would like to write 5. But this is a fraction that requires you to reduce, which is why we put that up in step 1. So 5 goes into 5 one time. And 5 goes into 25 five times. So the fraction is actually 1 fifth. You should go ahead and subtract the exponents on your variables now. So the power on the h is going to be h to the first. And then on the k's, it'll be k to the third. And notice you can just extend that fraction bar. Um, so you can write it like that. Or you could just pull it out and you could write um, 
the 5 on the bottom without the 1. Or you could write 1 fifth out in front and then the H and the K to the third. All of those are equivalent answers. So you just kind of have to decide which one you prefer. This concludes part one of section 8.3. So you can go ahead and work on the first homework assignment from 8.3.